Many experiments on the International Space Station are intended to learn what we can about the conditions of long-term spaceflight as a part of the preparations for future missions out into the solar system. That includes experiments that use the human crew members as test subjects and those that focus on the millions of other living things on the station, the microbes, which share the station environment with the human crew. Commander Terry Virts will be taking samples for the experiment Microbial Observatory tomorrow and today we're joined by the principal investigator, Dr. Kosturi Venkatsawan of the California Institute of Technology and the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California to learn more about it. Hi, Dr. Venkatsawan. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, how are you? Thank you for having us on the air. Thank you. We really appreciate you joining us to talk some about this uh, experiment that they're going to be working on. Um, I know today um, Terry is actually reviewing some of the procedures for that, and now he'll begin doing some of the samples tomorrow. So let's first just talk about where do the microbes on the space station, where are they? Um, they are everywhere. Like, you know, we breathe and then we inhale and exhale microbes every day, like you know. So. Uh, International Space Station is not a you know different environment either other than microgravity, so so they are everywhere. We have to look for it. And and where do they come from? Yeah, that's a great question. So normally people say that it comes you know when you are living in your house the microbes comes from outside, but in the, in in the case of International Space Station you don't have a football outside football field so the dirt comes in and all, but actually the human are the walking fermenters so they hold say 10 to the 14 cells microbial cells when compared to their own eukaryotic cells they are about thousand times more. And it might come from the earth through the cargo and the human who are traveling between them. So the main source are human as well as the, 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 the stuff comes from the earth as a cargo. Okay, thank you. So if we can't control the microbes that are present, why is it important that we identify and monitor the microbes? It is not, it is not that we cannot control. The thing is, uh, it is different from what we are seeing in the Earth compared to what is in a closed environment. Because NASA has t taken utmost care to have appropriate uh, no, air environmental system of a closed system like in space stations to see what can be there in the air, in the air of the space station, which is a very closed system where you know a lot of things are being inhaled, inhaled and exhaled by the human present in there. So it is not that you cannot control, but you need to know what is in there so that for a long period of uh, human habitation in a closed system, you can learn from there and avoid a kind of prevention so that if you monitor what is in there, you can prevent easily. And uh, we should not forget the microbes are integral part of the human, so there are a lot of beneficial microbes out there that helps us also. We are not living in a sterile environment, okay? We are not transgenic human. What that means is we are not made up of one single thing. We are made up of multiple things. So human knows how to live with things together, a kind of immune system they have to develop so that, you know, for some other uh, unwanted thing, they can fight. The microbes out there can fight from other bad microbes also. So basically, maintenance is a key part to live uh, and have a better uh, living uh, conditions in a closed system. Okay, great. Thank you so much for that information. So I know Terry's going to be gathering samples tomorrow. Can you describe for me the on-orbit part of this, um, this experiment? How and where are they going to be gathering, or where will he be gathering the samples? I think uh, you might have shown some of the places where we are collecting samples. So um, uh, we have awarded this uh, experiment through NASA Space Biology Program to use the state-of-the-art molecular techniques to uh, see how the microbes are, uh, you know, there in a set of locations. For example, astronauts are using the uh, exercise platform, so they sweat a lot, so that means they also, you know, shed a lot of microbes. So that kind of place is where 
a lot of activities going on are the main target to have and also day to day they have to eat so there are certain uh, specified area where they can eat and then uh, you know chat so that is the other place where people can you know shed stuff so a dining table and uh, this particular experiment is on the US side only so we are having the nodes one and two and three are covered of the US side as well as some of the exercise place and we also have other experiments which are on the way to collaborate with the European and Japanese people to measure the microbial diversity of their uh, you know uh, section of the space station also Okay, so so now we know where, and I think you've also described also, you know, why you chose these locations. The samples are being returned on Dragon. Will you be um, analyzing these, or how do you analyze the samples? Yeah, so uh, for the past 10, 15 years, NASA um, is monitoring based on the traditional culture-based analysis. So we all know that, you know, you can get only 1 to 10 percent of information if you're using the traditional microbiological methods. So the state of the art has evolved from traditional microbiology using the genomic analysis. So we are using the gene-based system to get the genetic fingerprinting of these things. So that would help us to see whether any particular cargo is taking a particular kind of microbes all the time. So you have to repeat again and again the same sort of method, methods so that you understand where to uh, you know, control and mitigate the plan. So the state-of-the-art molecular technologies are very powerful and not time-consuming and also not laborious and also analyze a lot more samples. So we are using molecular techniques. Great. And how do you anticipate on using the results of, of uh, this study, I mean, on orbit and also on Earth? Correct. So there are a couple of things. Number one is, you know, if you know what are the things out there, whether that is beneficial to humankind or the one that is uh, not good and harmful, and, you know, sometimes under microgravity, uh, some changes might happen. If such kind of mutate, mutation is happening, then you will know what needs to be targeted and eradicated using appropriate cleaning regimes, as well as some sort of uh, mitigation plans can happen. So this is a first step towards, uh, you know, achieving that particular goal, how to maintain a better living condition for the astronauts for a longer period of time. So right now we are getting data for two to three years, and that can be used to suggest NASA how to build appropriate uh, environmental control system, thereby containing certain microbial uh, parameters. And also, as is said all the time, there are certain many beneficial microbes out there that helps us to produce it for tomorrow's food processing. For example, if you are going to have a human presence in you know, far away planets, you know, uh, the one of the biggest thing is how do you keep the food and replenish it? So some of the beneficial microbes that you see there might be useful to the conditions that helps them to process such kind of things and then get benefited. Well, thank you very much for joining me again, Dr. Vinkatswan. It's very interesting research, and we look forward to uh, learning more about the findings that you have throughout this. Thank you very much. You're, you're very welcome, and a special thanks to the Commander uh, Wirth, and uh, hope to get more good samples tomorrow.